Cheers. <laughs> Welcome to the Voluntary Virtues Network. This is Fireside Philosophy. I'm Steve, and I'm here with Mike. Yo. Kevin. And Matt. Cheers. And I am drinking Double Bastard yeah. today. Uh, new new release, right? This is a new year's release? I believe it just came out yesterday. 2014. Cilantro, ever so delicious. Oh, so Pretty tasty. freaking good. 11%, ooh. It's so up to good. 11% now? Yeah. It wasn't it like 10.2 last time? I, I think last year's was up there too, but a few years ago they changed it. Sip it slowly, savoring the flavor. <laughs> I'm going to have to switch. Mine's 5.5%. Boop, 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 That's like half. <laughs> it's, yeah, more than like half. <laughs> That's why I said it laughing. <laughs> anyway, we're going to be continuing our talk today on the three things that are changing the world. This week we're talking about Bitcoin and related currencies and and technologies. Uh, yeah, money is a big controller in the world today. It's it's uh, one of the main re- main ways they use the they the elite or government or whatever you want. to say Illuminati um, the powers that be or yeah whatever yeah. is whatever is controlling is. the currency uh, Bitcoin is a good way to circumvent that power um, for those of you who don't know what Bitcoin is how it works Kevin could you kind of give us a quick rundown on the blockchain and how that works right let me gather my thoughts here <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to put you on the spot. No, that's fine. So <laughs> Kevin, big- say everything you know about everything <laughs> now. <laughs> Explain the internet. I hear it's a series of tubes. It's a series of tubes or something. A series of interconnecting tubes. Do what now? <laughs> so Bitcoin works by st- on top of these tubes. <laughs> uh, the internet. <laughs> on top of the internet, which is a series of tubes. Okay, continue. So basically, uh, I'm not an expert in Bitcoin, but the way I understand it is that essentially there's everybody or somebody has a wallet that wallet is a cryptographic key which then is used to sign transactions so for example if you're transferring just as an analogy if you're transferring money to somebody you want to know that you own that piece of money that you're getting transferred so the way that's done is that this is why it's bitcoin's called a cryptocurrency it uses cryptography to essentially prove mathematically that a uh, transaction is what it says it is. And the way it's also decentralized, so there's a public ledger uh, where every transaction is recorded, and it's called the blockchain. And essentially, there's a group of Bitcoin users which are called miners, and miners are looking for a complex mathematical formula, let's say. And as they're doing that, they're essentially um, supporting this blockchain. And this blockchain is essentially distributed across anybody who's running Bitcoin and these miners all across the internet. So, and essentially it's, it's kind of a, it's a really fascinating way to show that there's some truth about the world. It's essentially, consensus through everybody that has the blockchain. And I guess the, the important part of that is is that every single Bitcoin transaction that has ever happened is recorded and publicly available. That's right. So, you know, to to I, I not not to downplay down to downplay Bitcoin, but it is very important to say that Bitcoin is not completely anonymous as itself. Because it's not at all anonymous. Yeah, it's yeah exactly. Anonymous. Because if you know what somebody's Bitcoin address <laughs> is, you can find out exactly all the transactions they've had. But it's but there are ways around that. You can anonymize your transactions, and then that does kind of slow something down if somebody were to be watching. Well, you. the actual translate the transaction is still seen. 
it's tying the numbers to the people. Exactly. That is the difficult part, which helps with with staying anonymous. Yeah, but for the trans none of the transactions are anonymous. They're all op- out in the open for everyone to see. Yeah, which is why it's less likely to harbor corruption. Right, because you can you can see where it's going and you can track it. And, and Unlike money from central banks, which is, you know, shady to say the least, their money creation, and what actually is happening with large amounts of money. Yeah, that that does go to kind of. Um, uh, I I think one of the most you know uh, things that is talked about the least, but is almost the most important, is that you know when you control the money supply that most people use, which is what they do. Most people use U.S. dollars. It, that if you can control the supply of that, you can control not everything, obviously, but most everything. And then, you know, you have it, you, you tie that to the creation of, of the Federal Reserve and these different central banks all go back to, you know, different families with a lot of wealth and all that. And then you, you get back to allegedly a quote from, uh, I think it was Mayor Rothschild that said that, you know, I care not who wins the election. I'm paraphrasing. I can't remember exactly what it was. I care not who runs the country. Give me control of the currency, and that's all that matters, you yeah. know. And so that, that, that does say a lot that... If if we if we want to be more free in the future, we have to recognize the fact that the control mechanism is the one that most people don't think about the most, and that's the thing that it's a series of ones and zeros that they say this is money because we say it is. You know, I mean, at, at this point, it's probably less than three percent now of U.S. currency is actually physically printed notes. The rest of it mm-hmm. is ones and zeros going back and forth between accounts. So let me let me throw this to play devil's advocate for a minute. Fair enough. How is that different from Bitcoin, which is just ones and zeros going back and forth? Um, The difference is, is that it is um, decentralized. There is no one person or one group of people controlling where the Bitcoin goes or another cryptocurrency goes or how it's created. Or the information about it. Or the information about it. There's it, you no know, secret meetings behind smoke-filled doors. Yeah, exactly. You know, there's no there's no bankers smoking cigars in a bar somewhere in New York City, you know, secretly coming up with a plan of this. You can, if you want to, you can actually go find the original white paper for Bitcoin, and it's a couple hundred pages long. Am I am I right about that? It's a much less. It's, it's less than that. Okay. It's, I mean, it's very complicated mathematically, but it's very short. Okay. So, but the thing is, is that anybody can look that up. Now, on the obverse, I dare you to go ask the Federal Reserve, hey, can you tell me exactly where the U.S. dollar comes from? And they will give you the most roundabout answer you've ever heard in your entire life. And you don't need to do that personally. You can look into um, a good example is uh, A Creature from Jekyll Island by G. Edward Griffin. You know, he talks about the beginning is that they give a roundabout answer of like, well, the U.S. dollar is bound up, is backed by U.S. bonds. Okay, well, what are those bonds backed by? Oh, those bonds are backed by U.S. dollars. <laughs> what? <laughs> so the, the yeah. so 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 the debt to pay the U.S. dollar is backed up by U.S. dollars, and with a straight face, they'll be like, uh huh, yeah, yeah, you got it, that's it, and the, you're supposed to accept that as an answer of being somehow rational, you know. <laughs> but yeah, so that that's the difference right there is the fact that it is anybody if they want to, can download the Bitcoin client or another cryptocurrency client if they don't like Bitcoin for whatever reason and create their own. Yeah, that's worth kind of pointing out is that Bitcoin is completely open source and there are what are called forks of the Bitcoin source code, which is what Mike's talking about. Mm -hmm. And there's some weird ones like uh, Dogecoin, which is a Mm -hmm. funny dog looking thing. I like that one. Litecoin. Didn't didn't they buy like a NASCAR? They, they bought the advertisement yeah. of right. NASCAR <laughs> car for that or something? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. One point about control, it's worth pointing out that if you read that original research paper, mm-hmm. it, he's, uh, well, he or she or some group, we don't know, but they're very clear that if somebody controls, I think, more than 50% of the processing power of the Bitcoin network, they can control the, yeah. the mm-hmm. protocol. Yeah. Right. Wait, 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 and that's wait, wait, almost wait. happened before. 
Yeah. Well, I think but, it, but see, that that's that's a point in in Bitcoin's favor. When any time a group started getting closer to close to fifty one percent, people automatically bailed because they don't want Bitcoin to be controlled. Right. Yeah. But that definitely the, seemed to be the reaction with it, that I heard. The the whole thing with Bitcoin is it's ruined if it's controlled. So it is in everyone's best interest to keep it uncontrolled and thus avoiding that 51%. And it, it does all, even for the people who do uh, reach that point, it's bad for them because you don't want the currency to crash. Right. Right. So they're not, they, it's not in their interest to have that be the case. I, uh, I, I think we had a question from our live studio audience. Well, I, did, I would like you to restate that that was an important piece of, of a puzzle. Okay. Can, I didn't catch it. So can you say that again about the 51%? So I don't know the exact details, but if you read the original Bitcoin paper, right. it will, I mean, it's very clear that there is, it's, I don't know if this was a design feature right. or if it was just something that can't be worked around mathematically. But basically, if somebody can change, uh, I don't know what the fifty-one percent exactly if, is. If you're, it's, I believe it's the miners. It, yeah. If you're, if you're like basically, okay. if you're the one verifying the transactions, right? If you're over half of them, then you essentially can double spend your Bitcoin. Yeah. If yeah. you're over fifty-one percent. Yeah. And you can, in fact, I think, change old transactions. It, it's something that, yeah, that if it happens, then it would be very. Uh, is it only a miner that would do it? That's my understanding of it, at least. Uh, yeah, this is right, spe talking specifically this, about... Please, and you know what it is, please put some comments in there. Yeah, what I'll do is I'll... Because I remember the paper, I remember the... So I'll look up the paper and Thank I'll add you. a comment. I appreciate but I think your, point, uh, your points are valid that it's unlikely and everybody's interest is against okay. it, but... It's worth just pointing out. And, yes, and, it is. And, and it would be something really obvious to say that I think if you're in dealing with any sort of new venture of any sort of amount of money that is, you know, would be, you know, able to, if you lost it, harm your, your livelihood or anything like that. If you found out that that's that a group of people controlled more than half of it. And you didn't know who they were, or you were unaware of like their nature and all that sort of stuff, and you didn't always know you trust them. Would you still trust that currency? So at that point, like, that's the thing that, as as I see it, that it hasn't happened yet, and I doubt it ever will. That if one person or a very small group of people who you know aligned with a certain interest controlled more than half of a, a certain cryptocurrency. I don't think people trust it, and very quickly they would move on to something else. Well, don't you think that they could do that now? The, the uh, it has Stanley and you know the, the, the ones of these banksters. Think it's just well, like no, no, that, that that's a good point. Um, uh, when when Bitcoin was getting up to be like uh, above a thousand, uh, what last year or something like that, uh, J.P. Morgan Chase, which should tell you everything about you know nefarious people if they have their name jp morgan attached to it um they jp morgan want to start their own cryptocurrency hmm. they're talking <laughs> about it and they, see the thing and it was really interesting that they're trying to patent it and the way they're trying to patent it was they're almost trying to challenge bitcoin on it and they couldn't be the, if i remember correctly they were not allowed to grant a patent on it yeah but they filed the patent like 25 times Wow. Like they were rejected, and they just filed the exact same thing Maybe over again. Slip by him. And the patent office was was somebody at the patent office had like you know some virtue or something. It was like no, yeah, you're doing insane. something that you know you're trying to sneak. You that's know cool. you're trying to be sneaky and and get around something that is obvious. You know not. Um, yeah. I think the other important point is that Bitcoin is just really the first in this yeah. collection of. So maybe this is a flaw in Bitcoin. Probably not, but maybe it is. And then another cryptocurrency could come up that solves that problem. So it's kind of the beauty of... I believe that could even be solved within the uh, Bitcoin uh, architecture. I, can't, I believe it was the other Kevin who discussed this. Was th There may be a way to fix that. I don't remember what he said. But there, there may be a way to solve that particular problem within Bitcoin itself. Right. Because um, it, it can be updated. But, of course, 
you make the wrong change, then they could throw off the value. Right. Well, the thing about the blockchain, too, is that the possibilities with it aren't just monetary. You also have... Uh, what's that? What's that other Ethereum. company? Ethereum. Mm Ethereum, -hmm. with their with their change, um, and I don't understand it exactly, but you can add more per chain than you can with Bitcoin, which opens up the possibilities of self-regulating uh, contracts, so that you don't even have to rely on the U.S. legal system or any legal system to, to enforce contracts anymore. Mm -hmm. Everything's going to be black and white if these, if these parameters are met, then these Bitcoin or, or whatever, whatever money you're dealing with gets transferred to this wallet. If they're not, then it doesn't transfer. Yeah. Um, and, and that could be used from anything from like escrow... Or, uh, you know, any any kind of contract uh, that's that's a simple transaction like that. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, no matter how many parameters you have. I mean, you you that that's the thing is that with 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 all these different cryptocurrencies, the ledgers are all public. So you know, if you say like you had an agreement to say, sell a, uh, you know, a, a parcel of letter of a property, be it, you know, a plot of land or, you know, an expensive car or something, something that's that's worth it to try to go to an arbiter for, you know. Mm -hmm. Like, hey, I feel that this person has not gone through with their contract. You can say, like, well, they said, you know, if you had some sort of agreement, and obviously if you're dealing with something that is a large sum of money, you should probably sign a contract involving it. And if you said, like, well, hey, this person agreed to pay me X amount of money on the 15th of, let's say, November, and they didn't come through on it, you know, you could show them, hey, so this is the wallet that I was using for this agreement. But I, this is what I sent them as. This is where I want them to send the money. 15th of November, I see no transaction there. They never sent me the money. You have an agreement to, uh, it would probably be smart if you're writing a contract to be sent in cryptocurrency that you're saying they're like, I want it to be sent to this not this address, you know. And that's, that's not at all what I'm talking about. Though. Okay. I think right. he's talking well, more about automatically well, fulfilling yeah. contracts. Okay. Like, so basically you agree to terms and then it automatically uh, takes a Bitcoin or the cryptocurrency and transfers it to the other right. one. Where, okay. the, where there's no human who actually has to go and fulfill it. You both agree to terms and it does it. Okay, so there's a program written, written to go boop, 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 boop. Yeah, right. we, we agree once, on this Once date, these this terms are happen. met, the, the computer will automatically send Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. uh, and you, and you, this could be fairly complicated. Like if this happens and you send this much to this wallet, if this happens, you, can, you send this much to this wallet. It, it's similar to how, uh, I, I think it's similar to how stocks are actually held, uh, managed by computers now. Sure. Or that uh, when certain t things are met, they sell or automatically buy or do all sorts of things, but all in very fast intervals. Uh, On a side note, high-frequency trading machines, yes. the entire stock market is now a scam. <laughs> Don't buy st stocks, everybody. Get out while you still can. <laughs> Anyways, so, yeah, back on that. So I kind of think of, like, so so when you're, you're, you're sending the... Um, you know, the the program is written to send the Bitcoin as part of whatever contractual agreement. In my mind, I'm, for some reason, I still kind of like hear that like dial-up modem of like, shh, <laughs> oh, I made it, okay, it's there, you know, like, is that, is that just me or am I the only one thinking that or maybe I'm just dating myself, I don't know. <laughs> you are dating yourself just a little. No, <laughs> damn it. I saw a breakdown of what all those sounds actually mean. Tell me, tell Very me. Very interesting. What, what, what is it? Oh, yeah. I didn't care enough. <laughs> no, what, 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 so, so what does it mean? I'm kind of curious. I need it, to know It just now. basically is running through on authentication with the network. I mean, okay, all right. Uh, yeah. Robots. If you, robots, actually. <laughs> <laughs> what, we'll, get, we'll get to that later. Yeah. Oh, yes. so we still have time for robot yeah. sex. Uh, yeah, I want to get into... Uh, the idea of, of like like a, a Yelp type uh, type review for 
for uh, relationship or not relationships, um, reputation. Right on. Yeah. No. Um, that, yeah, that's important for sure. I, I think I think the blockchain technologies could be used for something like that in lieu of the current kind of uh, government regulations. And, and I think th there's an example of that. Um, if anybody remembers the Silk Road, by the way, the, the, the gentleman on trial uh, for uh, the Silk Road, if, if you have the ability to support him uh, in his legal defense, you should, because, uh, yeah, Ross Ulbrich, right? For right. Silk Road, uh, Ross Ulbrich, Sounds I believe right. was right. Um, but the, the allegedly, s allegedly, uh, the um, the Silk Road had had a ratings reputation thing similar to Amazon or eBay and all that. And now that now that's in a realm that most people think to be so shady that you couldn't possibly you know conduct yourself. Yeah, yeah, you couldn't possibly con con you know conduct yourself in a professional manner. But yet. You could go on the Silk Road not saying that I or anyone else, anyone else here has access to that information or acted upon it, but you could Yeah, you read this somewhere. Yeah, I read this somewhere on, on a completely unrelated site, but you could, you know, have a rating of, you know, whether or not this person was reliable and would deliver upon what they said they would deliver upon. And, you know, and it was a star rating in a very, you know, cheesy sort of similar way to eBay. Like, if somebody had a three-star, you'd be like, mm, I don't know. But if four or five-star, you'd be like, well, yeah, sure, everybody said that they've gotten what they've gotten. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be interesting. So so it would, your rating would be tied to your wallet then? Most, that... most likely, that's what I would think. Yeah, I, I think yeah it, something like that. If somebody were to start changing their wallet a, a lot, they would either be trying to hide something, or they would be not be be very smart. Or it wouldn't it wouldn't have a, a lot of reputation because it doesn't have many transactions. Right? Yeah, exactly. You People could have, would be kind of you leery could, about it. Yeah, if you integrated um, a rating system into the wall into the blockchain, where that that was then, I don't know how much that would actually add to the computing power and how that would change. Well, this is this is more about in the future po mm -hmm. post state or post semi post state in a, in a place where the state is becoming obsolete. But if we could implement it now, it'd be even better. <laughs> oh, of course. That, that's why we're talking about this because what we start now will be built on for the future. And the more we're using things like Bitcoin, 3D printers, uh, hemp products, the less we're be will be controlled by the state. And the more people who do that, the le the more the state will become obsolete. And these are three of the ways uh, right now that people can do things to further that along. That so I think. Oh, okay, sorry. Oh, that that kind of rings a bell from back when we did that. Uh, you know, what did we do? Four parts on that. The seventeen beliefs to freedom. Like the yeah. state is not going to collapse all at once. So when 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 the ability for for people and you know people who may not know that much to do with technology, any any soccer mom, for lack of a better word, can set up a Bitcoin account. That is a sign of the collapse of the state. When you can do that so simply and exchange transactions without them really being able to do a whole lot about it, that is a sign of them saying they've lost control because they cannot stop it. You know, wor worst comes to worst, you change the currency and then they don't even know what to do after that because the state always moves at a sluggish space. They never move quickly unless they have like guns. In relation it, to technology. Especially within relation to te technology. The only time they move fast is if they know that person is there at that time and they have guns. Other than that, move slow as shit. So, or slow as molasses, excuse me. <laughs> so I think on that point. It's the internet. Yes, it is the internet. Censorship what? probably worth pointing out how do people actually use Bitcoin practically the soccer moms so all soccer moms out there listen up um, so the way and everyone else and everybody else <laughs> um, to pay your son's season you put in this address right <laughs> right <laughs> that's the way to do it so basically there's a couple ways to use Bitcoin one is to down to go to bitcoin.org or other uh, software packages if you just search for Bitcoin wallet you Air can bits. Airbits is a good way to find merchants in, in your area that offer Bitcoin, um, that sell for Bitcoin. 
So the way to get Bitcoin is you need to either get somebody to give you Bitcoin or um, exchange currency for Bitcoin. And there's or a couple- Exchange anything for Bitcoin. Exchange anything for Bitcoin, right. So if you know somebody that has Bitcoin and you want to give them something, they'll give you Bitcoin. Then essentially you just use the software and you give them your wallet and then they just send you the Bitcoin and then you have it. Then you can use it. Or um, there's some services, I'm not affiliated at all with them, but um, just search for Coinbase and similar services where you can pretty easily get Bitcoins and use them. And uh, if anybody watching this who's, who's super paranoid about Bitcoin and and I understand the mindset to a certain extent, like, okay, you know, it's kind of weird who's Satoshi, is he a person or a group of people, all this, you know, back and forth. Who is forth. Satoshi, Mike? Not, nobody knows. <laughs> so, no, but who, what, what, what are you talking about, Satoshi? Satoshi, Satoshi Nakamura. Saka, Nakamoto. Satoshi Nakamura. Nakamoto? Nakamoto, like Nakamoto. Uh, I, I was allegedly the person who submitted the original white, uh, the white paper for Bitcoin at a technology conference in Tokyo in 2009, if I remember correctly. But, um, so if anybody's like really super leery about Bitcoin, this is, I always recommend to them to just go, uh, the website is blockchain.info, and if you go into that website, you can look at every single transaction that is currently going on in the blockchain. And you think like, well, how is that supposed to allay somebody's fears? I guarantee you, you watch the blockchain for five minutes, you're going to see a couple transactions that go across that are like a couple thousand dollars, sometimes 25 grand, 20, sometimes 50 grand. I've seen a couple where I was just looking at that and all of a sudden plops up $150,000 just goes up on that blockchain list real quick. If it's not reliable, who the hell trusted it enough to send $150,000? Apparently, somebody trusted enough and enough people trusted enough to be sending that amount of money on a fairly frequent basis so that's that's the way i look at it that if really if it's that unreliable who's sending that amount of money you know well to be fair the price is somewhat volatile yes it is fairly new although i believe they passed half the halfway mark yeah that was yeah a couple months ago something like that yeah oh halfway mark you mean the number of bitcoins that are, are to be released right so that's worth pointing out there's a fixed number of bitcoins but they can be um, chopped up into really tiny pieces. So essentially, there would be kind of natural deflation in a healthy way. And then and the purpose of limiting the amount of Bitcoins is to, it, it's a, it's a fail safe against inflation, right? That, that nobody could just be like, oh, I'm going to create Bitcoins of no, 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 without, you know, doing the work with their GPU or their CPU to, to, to create the new ones through the client. They can't just, you know, fabricate it out of nothing. Yeah. Kind of like fractional winning. Yeah, yeah, they, yeah, we're trying to avoid that nonsense. Yeah. yeah. No fractional reserve going on. Right. The opposite of what we want. Although I think fractional reserve type lending could exist in Bitcoin, couldn't it? It could, but uh, judging from past history, I don't know how many people would be willing to... Involve themselves in that sort of a scheme. Yeah, I mean, I, I think you, I think you'd have to. I don't know how you'd set that up, but. I mean, there, there's there's been plenty. no. You're right. I don't think it could be done. It's it has to be one for one. Yeah, I don't think there's any fractional reserve. That's one of the big pluses to it. I mean, you, you've got plenty of of uh, very smart people being involved in that sort of a scheme in the past. I mean. Uh, but you can't transfer Bitcoin that you don't have. That's yeah, the but you, you can't say, create Bitcoin out of nowhere. But somebody could say, they like, could make a promise. I have a collection yeah, of saying. Bitcoin that I'm going to transfer. No. Here's my futures. Let's but do a futures trade. It wouldn't be Let's based do off, like, like that. the idea of it. It would be based off somebody agreeing to pay someone in the future a certain amount of Bitcoin. Based on deal. a contract that might be a yeah. little bit leery. And a contract for robot sex. Robot sex. Robot yeah. sex. Yeah. Do we have time for that? Like, or do you, would there be just like a QR code on your chest and you just scan it? And you <laughs> can pay in Bitcoin or alternate cryptocurrencies. Yeah, I mean, I, so is is this now when you're oh, when you're paying bit. in in Bitcoin <laughs> for robot sex? Is this something we're like? Is this gonna be on a card? You know, and mm. and you give it to the 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 robot uh, of your choice and say. Mm. 
do, do they does the robot have laser eyes and scan the bar the QR code? Laser or, eyes. Is or, a good or is there question. like a or is there <laughs> like a slide thing where you go it's sync? Like yeah. You know? Or those yeah. new pin type switches. Yeah. yeah. Un unfortunately, we're out of time. Oh, we can't get damn it! Yeah. Oh, we were so close Every to getting time. through that today too. Dude, next time. Next time. Next okay. time we're gonna have to get on robot sex. We really need to get on that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. There's a good chance next, next episode. Damn good chance. Watch Happy Halloween. Time. Happy Halloween. See you guys next week. Cheers. <laughs>